We got this tiny little desk watch which has its own personal assistant built in that can control your home appliances just like this. Hi ESP, turn on the lights. Well, this is nothing but the newest product from Espresso system called as ESP32S3 box and in this video I will let you know everything regarding this product like what are its features, its specifications, what different kind of peripherals this particular product contains and I'll also let you know how to update its built-in firmware to the newest firmware available in the market. So I'll let you know everything regarding this product in this video. So before starting the video, let me ask the small little device to roll the ad. Hi ESP. Roll the ad. This video is sponsored by LTM, which is a PCB designer based software company. Now, let me tell you one very interesting, very unique feature about this software, which I bet you haven't seen in any other PCB designing software. And that feature is called as follow me mode. Now, this is truly very useful feature, which I can't explain it in simple words. Rather, let me show you the actual video of this particular feature. Have you seen that? the path automatically adapts the curve quite seamlessly. And now I can imagine making this kind of path in any other PCB designing software would be really a tedious task for sure. Now you can also try this and many other features of this PCB designing software by just clicking on the link mentioned in the description. Yes, by clicking on that link, you'll be getting a free trial version of LTM designer software. So go ahead, try it out and if you find it interesting, you can purchase this software later on. So this is how we received this product with the commercial grade packaging. On the top, we get to see the actual product image and on the side, we have some important features of this product which includes the chip used in it which is ESP32S3 chip. Well, I'll talk about the specifications of this chip later in this video. And then it states AI voice integration which means it supports voice recognition and that too offline voice recognition that means we don't even need to connect this board to internet for like voice recognition and voice wake up features. And well it also supports two language for voice recognition Chinese and English. Now on the other side of the box it states that ESP32S3 box is a combination of these many things. Now on the third side, we have some other features which are high performance audio front end algorithms used for audio output, then third party cloud platforms and ESP Rainmaker support. So Rainmaker is kind of a complete IoT infrastructure developed by Aspersive system. Then we have the LVGL support used for making graphical user interface. And then it states open source. So yeah, the complete firmware of this product is open source so we can easily download it, modify it according to our need. And now on the fourth side, we have some information about the company and the QR code for user guide. So that was all about the packaging. Now, when I open the box, we get to see the actual product on the top. Let's keep it aside and see what else we get here. So we have this small booklet, both in Chinese and English language. Apart from this, we also get a RGB LED and some connecting wires. In the end, we get this dock on which we can easily fit the actual product and put it on a desk like a normal desk watch. So this is what you will get inside the box. Now let us focus on the actual product. Now as the name suggests that this product is based on ESP32 S3 chipset. Now it's the most advanced chipset from Espresso, which is currently available in the market. It's specifically made for AIoT application that's AI plus IoT. Talking about its specifications then, this chip is based on dual core Extensa LX7 clocked at 240 MHz with 512 KB of SRAM and 384 KB of ROM. Now this chip has some exclusive and interesting features just like this chip has built in SPI, dual SPI, quad SPI and octal SPI as well for interfacing the external flash and RAM. Now, as we are talking about the external flash, then this chip has support of attaching up to one gigabytes of flash memory and RAM, which is mentioned in the data sheet and which is literally insane. It also has built in two ultra low power coprocessors, built in AI acceleration support, and it also provides 44 GPIOs. So these were the important specifications of S3 chip. Now, if you want to know more about this chip, I'll leave the data sheet link in the description of this video. So yeah, that was all about the specifications of S3 chip in general. Now let's dive deep into the ESP32 S3 box and let's observe its specifications. So this box is based on ESP32 S3 with 16 MB of quad SPI flash memory and 8 MB of octal SPI PSRAM. 
It has two built-in microphones in the front for far field voice interaction. Along with that, it has a 2.4 inch LCD display with a capacitive touch panel. On the left, we have two push buttons, one for reset and other is the boot button. We can also power and program this board with a type C cable from the left. On the top, we have a mute button in case you don't want the ESP box to listen to your commands, which is also visible with the help of the mute LED. On the other side, we also have an LED which is the power LED. On the right hand side, we have a speaker built in. And now on the bottom side, we have some exposed GPIO pins that can be used for attaching input or output devices. Well, I was even expecting the built-in battery, but there is no built-in battery in ESP32 box. Now we can definitely hang this box on the wall with the help of these slots on the back. Or else, we can directly fit this dock from the bottom and put it on our desk like a desk watch. Now the dock also comes with the GPIO pins and a USB port to power and program the board. So yeah, that was all about the overview and the specifications of this board. Now let's just power it up and let's see what we are getting inside the built-in firmware. Okay, so now let's power up this box and let's see what we are getting inside the built-in firmware. So I'll power up this board using the Type-C uh, connector. So let's see what happens. Okay, so it's showing the Espressive logo with the nice little animation. And here we have the Espressive branding, okay. Now it's showing some steps of usage or steps for usage, which says, uh, say high ESP to wake up the device, wait for high ESP to show on the screen and say command like turn on the light. Okay, let's press the OK button. Oh, it's quite smooth, like dot screen is quite smooth and quite responsive. Okay, so now let's just test it out by occurring that wake up command. Hi ESP. Oh, turn on the light. Oh, wow, so the wake up command was perfectly recognized and also it recognized the command which I have given to turn on the actual light. But there is no light turned on here. Well, it's just because uh, they have given this command like the action is given to the particular GPIO pins here. And for that reason only, they have given this particular RGB LED strip to test out the built in firmware. Okay, so I'll quickly connect this RGB LED to the dedicated pins which will be displayed onto the screen. Okay, so I successfully connected it to the ESP32 box and as you can see the light turned on. I'll load down the exposure. Okay, so as you can see the light turned on to the white color. Let's just try to say like turn off the light. Hi ESP. Turn off the light. Whoa, as you can see like this is the command executed and we are also able to see the response using that RGB LED. Let's try to change the color. Hi ESP. Turn red. Hi ESP. Turn blue. Wow. Hi ESP. Turn green. Okay, so as you can see, this is perfectly working. And the surprising part is this all is working without any internet connection. Like we didn't give any configurations or any Wi-Fi connected to this device. It is working with this built-in firmware without internet connectivity. So it and it's working perfectly fine. Like with the wake-up command, with the uh, with the built-in commands, everything is working. Okay. Also, we have this small Wi-Fi button on the top, and when you press on that button, it shows one QR code. And when we scan this QR code using this smartphone, it will be getting connected to the hotspot created by this device. I'll click on the connect button. It will get connected to this particular ESP box. Okay, it got connected on the screen. We got the second QR code. So let's just scan that QR code as well and let's see what happens. Okay, so it is an IP address. I'll open this IP address and okay so here we have okay so here we have one tiny little button which says light and hopefully we'll be able to turn on and off the light of this particular rgb led let's just try it out i'll turn on the light okay as you can see it got turned on and when i turn it off it got turned off as well and when we uh, tap on this light icon as you can see here are all the commands okay for red the gpi is 39 okay i think we can change it okay no we can't change it as of now and here are the voice command like the turn on the light to turn it on turn off the light to turn it on and here we have one more option called as customize color now here we can also change uh, the voice command let me just show you uh, when i click on this customize color uh, command i'll change this command to let's just say uh, ice blue color okay so ice blue color and i'll change the color to ice blue as well okay Okay, so here is the ice blue color. I will increase the brightness and the saturation to this particular point. Okay, so this is the particular color for the techie SMS blue or you can say ice blue. So I'll click on the save button where it is. 
uh, eyes blue color and okay click on the save button so we have successfully uh, saved one more command called as ice blue color using which we'll be able to turn the uh, led to the ice blue color and let's just test it out hi asp ice blue color okay as you can see the led turned on and let me just decrease this brightness to see the actual color uh, i don't think it is visible but it is an actual ice blue color uh, set from this particular device or this particular web application and this is how you can add the custom commands as well to do the customized task here okay but still we have very limited options like we can't uh, do this uh, gpi pins we can't change it out as of now and in the control section we can uh, you know control this led in real time so i can turn it on and off from here turn it on from here change the color from here change its brightness change its saturation okay so everything is in real time using this web application okay and i did turn it off from here as well now as we are talking about the firmware then i was not at all aware about which firmware this device is actually running on and to check it out i also connected it with my computer and when i opened the serial monitor on my arduino id and i just resetted this board but on the arduino id i was not able to see the actual firmware version okay so it's not at all visible so what i decided is let's just download the latest firmware available in the espresso website or the the HPSF GitHub page. Let us uh, burn this firmware on this particular device and let's see if we are getting some more features or not. So let me just take you to how to update the firmware onto this ESP32 S3 box. Okay, so here is the official GitHub page uh, which shows how to update the firmware of the ESP32 uh, S3 box. Okay, so here it shows the step for all the three OS Windows, uh, Linux, and Mac OS. In my case, I'm using the Mac system. I'll click on uh, this Mac OS. So, first of all, it says download latest firmware. When I click on this particular link, it will take me to another page. And here is the latest version av available at of now, which is the 0.2.1. I'll click on this. Okay, and here, uh, as you can see, here are the firmware files. So, this is for the Chinese version or Chinese language and this is for the English language so I'll click here to download it and as I have already downloaded I'll skip this particular step let us see the next step so the next step shows connect ESP32 S3 box to the computer using type C cable so yeah here is that uh, S3 box connected with my Mac system using type C cable and after that we need to install one tool called as ESP tool so I'll copy this command and paste it inside my terminal I'll paste it here press enter Okay, so it started downloading the ESP tool and we have the ESP tool successfully installed on our system. And as you can see, this is the version 3.2 installed. Okay, so after installing the ESP tool, the next step is we need to type this command. So I'll copy it. I'll paste that command here and let's just check it out if we need to change anything. So first of all, 0 cross 0 is the fixed flash address. So we don't need to change anything here. Second is download path slash test bin dot bin need to be replaced with the firmware path. So you need to change the download path. So I'll open this particular downloaded file. Click on get info button and uh, yeah, here is the download path. So I'll copy it and I'll paste it here inside this address. And uh, after that, we need to also copy the name of the file, which is this. So I'll copy it and put a slash here and paste it here and that's it so now let's just press the enter button and let's see what happens okay it started flashing the firmware it says writing one two three like it started writing the firmware onto this particular device so on the device there's nothing on the screen it is blank screen as of now and uh, let's wait for a couple of seconds Okay, so the firmware is successfully flashed and now what I'll do, I'll test this firmware, look into its features and if there are a couple of changes in this new firmware, I'll let you know. So when I use this ESP box after the firmware upgrade, I found out that the previous firmware was already the latest firmware. So there were the same applications, same uh, UI, same web application and everything was exactly the same. So yeah, that was the latest firmware that we have already seen and now talking about the application of this product then, just imagine like they see there are the GPIO pins exposed okay and that it has also a built-in voice assistant with a wake-up command so you can attach this small little device maybe in your car attach the peripherals and your car will become a smart car second example attach this uh, box on your fridge attach the peripherals and your fridge will become a smart fridge similarly you can attach this into any damn factory machine attach the peripherals with obviously like uh, with proper converter and uh, actuators and your that uh, your simple machine will become a smart machine so you can make any damn thing smart by attaching this small little esp32 
S3 works and that works without internet. It can work with internet as well, but it can work without internet seamlessly that we already seen. Okay, so there are endless application that you can think of using this particular device. And also in future, I think the company will allow us to give a particular command to a particular GPIO pin. So we'll be able to access all the GPIO pins with a different different voice command. So that is a feature which we can expect from the upcoming firmwares. Now talking about some things which i think is missing inside this is first of all it has no support for arduino and micro python yes we can't program it using these particular uh, ides we can program this particular board only using esp idf so in case you want you know how to use esp idf you can definitely program this particular board and particular chip as well okay so that's the thing which is missing but yeah we will be getting the support of uh, programming s3 chip in arduino and micro python micro python soon in the upcoming days okay so that we can expect okay but still this is missing as of now second thing as we can start programming will we also be able to call the third party apis as well so let's like i can say hi esp turn on the blink light and it will send the data to the blink server using the blink apis and we can interact like uh, like ESP box will be able to interact with the Blink and other third party clouds as well. So that is the feature which we can expect in future when we start, uh, you know, programming it using the Arduino ID. So yeah, these were the things which is missing as of now, but it will be definitely available in your future. And talking about this purchase link, well, I will leave the link of it in the description, but I don't think it is out for sale as of now. On some website, it shows out of stock, but I'll leave the link for that. So whenever it comes to a stock, whenever it's available in the market, you can get it uh, uh, for your desk maybe, okay? So yeah, that was all about the ESP32S3 box. Just let me know what is the project idea that is coming in your mind after watching this full video. Like, what will you make when you get this thing in your hand just imagine and let me know your imagination down in the description of this video no not in the description down in the comments of this video let me know your imagination let me know your thoughts your ideas and maybe i can make your ideas into reality and make a video of it we never know so do share your ideas thoughts and imagination in the comment of the video also like this video if you like this particular product and an exclusive video of it on YouTube. So subscribe the channel to see more such exclusive getting started detailed video of this new new IoT AI ML related products in the market. So do subscribe it if you haven't. And that being said, I'm just ending this video here and now. Just wait for my next one to explore, learn, share with me, Techie SMS.